A cerebral aneurysm is a weak spot in the blood vessels that are at the base of the brain usually, and that can form a small bubble excrescence or what we call a berry aneurysm or a saccular aneurysm um, most commonly. And that places the patient at risk uh, that this aneurysm can go on to leak or rupture and cause a hemorrhage in the brain, which is termed a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Subarachnoid hemorrhage. That's a hemorrhage in the subarachnoid space, the space that surrounds the brain. Uh, so if an aneurysm is discovered, uh, the ideal uh, scenario would, we, would be that we would be able to find the aneurysm before it ruptured and be able to treat it to prevent that from happening in the future. Aneurysms are um, may be discovered in several ways. Um, the first way is that if the patient um, presents with the aneurysm causing signs and symptoms, um, and the, the most catastrophic one would be a rupture. Uh, the blood, blood leaks from the aneurysm, causes a severe headache and a stiff neck. And patients usually describe that as the worst headache they've ever had in their life, um, like getting hit in the head with a baseball bat or a two by four, and it's associated with a stiff neck and it's not something they can usually ignore or just take medications for. They often seek medical attention immediately, either by going to the doctor or the emergency room. In addition to having an aneurysm rupture, aneurysms can slowly enlarge and cause compression of the surrounding brain structures. Um, these are commonly associated with compression of the cranial nerves or the nerves that go to the eyes and ears and mouth and so forth because that's where the nerves are at the base of the brain and that's the same location where we find um, cerebral aneurysms. So for example, uh, uh, an eye that, uh, where the lid starts to go down and, they be, uh, and the patient develops double vision and the pupil dilates, that's a an important sign that there may be an aneurysm that's enlarging, uh, causing that set of signs and symptoms. Um, other ones include slow loss of vision in one eye, um, and aneurysms near the optic nerve can cause this type of symptom as they enlarge slowly and cause compression on the cranial nerve. So, so rupture or cranial nerve compression symptoms uh, are, are two of the important signs that uh, alert a uh, physician or a patient that they have a brain aneurysm. Aneurysms used to be thought to be congenital, and congenital means that a patient is born with something, so uh, berry aneurysms were called congenital berry aneurysms. That's no longer uh, thought to be the case. Uh, we know now that uh, the majority of the aneurysms are acquired in adulthood, uh, in rare conditions, they're found in pediatric patients, but it's most likely they're found in adults. Most aneurysms are not uh, hereditary, um, and their patients are not usually born with aneurysms. Uh, it used to be uh, thought that they were congenital, uh, they were called congenital berry aneurysms, and it was believed that patients with, were born with a small aneurysm or a defect that then turned into an aneurysm. And we now know that uh, most uh, children or adolescents or young adults do not have brain aneurysms, and they develop uh, in adults, um, in the, you know, the common age group is in the 40 to 60s, uh, where they present with an aneurysm at that time. They may, patients may have a predisposition to a weak spot in the vessel when they're younger that then forms an aneurysm over time but the majority are uh, found in adult patients. Aneurysms are, are normally treated with uh, either observation if they're very small. So if an aneurysm is found in, in, in a patient where it's unruptured, it's found by a scan that was obtained for another reason, for example, and it's very small and is determined to have a low risk of rupture, what we will do typically is have the patient come back at regular intervals and get serial imaging. So we'll get either a CTA scan or an MRA scan, which is a MR angiography or a CT angiography. That's a reconstruction of the cerebral vessels with dye that's injected into the veins. 
and that can be repeated on a yearly basis or several year basis depending on how frequently that aneurysm needs to be imaged uh, based on its size and growth characteristics. So that's, that's, that's an observation uh, management. If an aneurysm needs to be treated, in other words, it needs to be excluded from the circulation because of a high risk of rupture, there are treatment options, and those treatment options include um, open surgery with clipping of the aneurysm where a small clip is placed across the neck of the aneurysm to exclude it from the circulation, or endovascular coiling uh, with or without a stent that's placed. Now in that procedure, um, the, both procedures, the patients go under uh, anesthesia, and in the coiling procedure, a catheter is threaded up through the vessels, up through the leg, and then up into the neck, and the aneurysm is catheterized, in other words, a small tiny tube is placed at the opening of the aneurysm and then a small coil is fed into the aneurysm where it coils up inside and then is released and, and let go and the coil uh, serves to block the blood from going in and eventually uh, the aneurysm clots off and no longer fills with blood and that removes the risk of rupture in the future. Now if the, if the opening of the aneurysm or the neck is wider um, the coils don't work as well because they're not held into the vessel. So what's called a stent may be placed in the vessel to hold the coils in, um, in the aneurysm itself. And this is called a stent coiling uh, procedure. Uh, some of the newer uh, stents are called flow diverters or, or pipeline is one brand. Um, there are some other brands, but these are called flow diverting stents where the weave of the stent is, is much, much tighter and it almost mimics the lining of the vessel and that type of stent is expanded to cover the opening of the aneurysm and then the aneurysm um, ends up uh, clotting off over time um, and obliterating itself so it removes it from the circulation effectively and prevents it from rupturing in the future. The other uh, uh, tried and true uh, long-term treatment for aneurysms is called microsurgical clipping and microsurgical clipping is an open surgery where a, an incision is made in the scalp and uh, we go under the base of the brain um, and lift, lift the base of the brain and under a high-powered microscope find the aneurysm and place a, a small microsurgical clip uh, to occlude the neck of the aneurysm and prevent it um, from bleeding in the future and that's also an extremely effective treatment to remove an aneurysm from the circulation uh, prevent it from pressing on nerves and preventing it from uh, being at risk for bleeding in the future. So these treatments are, are, can be done after an aneurysm is ruptured and caused bleeding to prevent the patient survived uh, to prevent it from bleeding again in the future or it can be done if an aneurysm is discovered uh, before it's bled and that gives us the opportunity to treat it before it's caused any kind of uh, problem by releasing blood into the into the space around the brain causing a hemorrhage. The success rates of uh, the, the clipping and the coiling or endovascular treatments with either coiling with or without stents is, is very high with uh, both procedures. So we're, um, we're fortunate, or patients are fortunate to have two treatment options. Um, it, it, there have been uh, many studies that have done comparing the two treatments, the clipping and the coiling treatment um, to each other and for different types of aneurysms and in different situations. And what seems to have come out over the last 20 years when comparing the two um, types of treatments is there are some aneurysms anatomically which are much better treated with endovascular or stent treatment there's another group of aneurysms which are, uh, look to be better treated with the clipping procedure just because of the configuration and anatomy. And then there's a large group of aneurysms in between um, that have anatomical uh, features that could be treated with clipping or coiling, uh, both successfully. And in those particular patients, um, the judgment on whether to do the clipping or coiling may depend on other factors other than the size and location of the aneurysm. 
Um, for example, what we know now is the um, clipping uh, procedure in um, the what we call anterior circulation aneurysms, where the majority of them are in the front of the brain, um, lasts longer um, and is more durable uh, than the coiling procedure in, in, in patients that have, that, have, that have been looked at that have had either procedure for similar aneurysms. And the, um, the coiling procedure uh, looks to be safer initially up front uh, for the first uh, period of time after the coiling procedure. Uh, but then the, um, the long-term outcome, they tend to be similar after a certain number of years. So um, based on that, patients uh, may, we may decide to recommend certain treatment based on patient's age, for example. If the um, patients are young, um, it, then they need to be protected for a longer period of time because they have more years to live. We may choose the clipping procedure because we know that that's a more durable procedure. The coiling procedure tends to be better in older age patients because uh, we usually get, can get rid of most of the aneurysm, if not all of it, with the coiling procedure, but there is a higher recurrence rate of the aneurysms with the coiling. Um, if they're in the older age group, they may never recur to the point where they're going to re-bleed, um, and so we may choose the, the coiling procedure in older individuals. And then there's the whole um, matter of patient choice. Sometimes we can't tell a patient that one patient, that one treatment is better than the other treatment, and it's up to them to decide uh, based on, you know, their general health factors and, and other things where they live, with accessibility to medical therapy and so forth, what treatment they would like to decide to have. Um, because we do tell the patients that the, the clipping procedure, for example, it involves an open surgery, they're in the hospital for a longer period of time in general, um, and um, they do have to take you know, a certain time off to work, from work to get through the procedure. The coiling procedure is generally shorter. Uh, sometimes they're out of the hospital in a day or two. It doesn't require open surgery, but it does require monitoring in the future to make sure the aneurysm is not recurring over time, and the patients need to be aware that they may have to have a retreatment uh, once or even multiple times if the aneurysm recurs. And even in some uh, uh, situations, they may have to go on to get a clipping procedure if the aneurysms recurred in a major way or several times after a coiling procedure. So these are factors that need to be considered if, if patients and the doctor come to a choice of treatment uh, for that particular patient and a particular type of aneurysm that they have. The bottom line is these aneurysms um, uh, can be uh, very serious if they're discovered. Uh, it's fortunate if patients uh, uh, get a scan for another reason and the, an aneurysm is discovered before it ruptures, then we have the opportunity to advise them um, uh, what, what the best treatment is. And the other thing that's important to know is that if we scan um, a number of people over the age of 40, uh, generally several percent of the adult population is going to have aneurysms because they're a common occurrence. Uh, and so many of them are small, most of them are small and don't rupture in the future. So many can be followed with serial scanning unless they reach a size that places them at risk for rupture in the future. So that I have many, many patients that we're following on a, you know, every year or every two year, sometimes every three year basis and do non-invasive imaging uh, repeatedly to make sure the aneurysm is growing. If it, it's small and it starts to grow and gets larger in size over several interval scans, then we usually would recommend treatment in that patient. My recommendations um, for patients that are found to have an aneurysm, um, that they should uh, seek some uh, specialist to, a uh, neurosurgeon and or an endovascular specialist that has a large experience with aneurysms because they can be very tricky to treat. Some of them are quite routine, but some of them are very complicated to treat. And it's best to um, come to a center that does a lot of aneurysms 
uh, to get the optimal treatment. It has been shown that the outcome from uh, treatment, um, particularly surgery, is better in centers that do a high volume of treatment every year versus uh, smaller hospitals that only do one or two a year. And that's been consistently shown across studies um, correlating the experience and the frequency of treating a certain condition and the outcome of that condition. And that particularly applies with aneurysms as well as complex heart surgery and other um, activities like that.